Hey guys, it's Jay and today I am here with my mid-month wrap-up for the Emojiathon. We are two weeks in and I figured I would do a wrap-up and tell you guys what I've read so far and what emoji challenges those were for. I've read a total of eight books so far for the Emojiathon. We still have two more weeks. So maybe I'm gonna get all the emojis done. That's the goal. We're gonna see if that actually happens. But without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read for the Emojiathon is The Diviners by Libba Bray and I read this for the shocked face emoji which is for a thriller or horror book. And if you're interested in my full thoughts on this book, I have a spoiler-free review, which I will leave up there for you. But, but I ended up giving this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The next book that I read for the Emojiathon is The Lovely Reckless by Cami Garcia. I also have a spoiler-free review of this book if you want to know my full thoughts. But I read this for the heart emoji, which is the read contemporary romance book. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it as well, but if you want to hear my full thoughts, then uh, check it out. The next book I read was City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare, and I read this for the eye emoji, which is a book that you've been seeing around everywhere. Which I am just going with like the whole Mortal Instruments series. Everybody seems to love these books, everybody talks about these books, and the Shadowhunter season 2 recently came out, so everybody's talking about them again. So I ended up giving this a 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. I really liked how there was more of a focus on Simon in this book. Because he was one of my favorite characters from the first book. One thing that really drew my rating back was all the relationship drama in this book. Literally every single couple had some form of relationship drama and it just got really old really fast. I just didn't care for it. I also think that the pacing of this particular book was very slow compared to the other three books and nothing really happened until the last 150 pages. Which kind of bummed me out. It felt more like a filler book than anything to me. I did like how the ending was very open though and it has a lot of potential for the continuation of the series. So I only have two more Mortal Instrument books to go so that is exciting. The next book that I read for this Emojiathon is Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendar Blake. And I read this for the nerd emoji. That's what I'm gonna call it. I don't know if that's what it's called. The challenge to read a book without any hype. And although I have heard about this book, I haven't really heard anybody talk about it at all. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Cass, who is not your average teenage boy. He hunts and kills ghosts for his living. His father was murdered by a ghost a couple of years ago, and since then he has made it his personal mission to seek vengeance for his death and that's when he gets a call about a ghost named Anna who is better known as Anna dressed in blood and he moves with his mom to Thunder Bay Canada in order to kill her. The best thing about this book is that it was set in Canada and there are so few books that I know of and have read that are set in Canada so I was very excited about that fact. Also I found it really cool that the book is literally written in red. So it's kind of like it's written in blood. I don't know if that was like the concept but that's how I'm taking it and I think that is super cool. I did like Cass as a main character. You don't often see male voice as the main characters for YA. Although I did find him annoying at times with his cockiness, I thought he was very sarcastic and witty and I like that in characters so I enjoyed him. I think that Anna was definitely my favorite character. She was very creepy and the way that she was described you could really picture her. I liked Caramel. Except like who names their child Caramel? Like she was super feisty and supportive though and like she was a popular girl but she wasn't mean like it was not your typical YA trope where it's the mean popular girl like she was actually very nice so that was like really refreshing. The book is definitely very fast paced it was hard to put down because you wanted to know what was going to happen next with Anna. The love in this book was really weird to me and I didn't enjoy that aspect of the book. So that's kind of why it wasn't a higher rating for me, I just found it really creepy. I think that the book would have been a lot better without the whole love aspect of it and it was just the ghost fighting aspect. There's a lot of graphic bloody murder scenes in this book. So if you have a queasy stomach, maybe like go in with caution. The next book I read for the Emojiathon is The Iron Trial by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare and I read this one for the heart eye emoji which is the challenge of reading a book that you bought solely based on the cover. And like it's such a pretty cover like. Ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was okay to me. It was average. It's not going to be a book that I'm like I love it so much. Like it was just like okay cool I read this book. This book follows Callum Hunt who has been told his entire life not to trust the mages 
in the Magisterium, which is a school for people with magical abilities. When he is called forward to complete the Iron Trial to allow him entry into the Magisterium, he sets out to fail. To his surprise, he ends up being chosen to attend the school, even though he received the lowest scores possible in the trial. He ends up forming a group with two other apprentices, Tamara and Aaron and they end up training with the top mage in the school, Master Rufus. They have to end up working together in order to learn how to control their magic for their first year in the Magisterium. I think that the pacing of this book was very slow, in my opinion. Nothing really happened until the last, like, 75 pages of the book. There was no progression at all. I was originally only going to give the book a two-star rating, but I ended up bumping it up because of the last 75 pages where things actually began to happen and it got more action-packed and exciting. I did really enjoy the magic system and how it was connected to the elements. I did like the sarcasm and humor in this book. I thought it was funny at times, but the main character Callum I really did not like. I found him very annoying at the beginning. He did end up growing on me by the end of the book, but he's still not my favorite character. Aaron was definitely my favorite of the trio. I thought he was super cute and funny. Tamara wasn't anything special to me. She was just a mediocre character that I didn't really connect with at all. I am interested to see how the story progresses, so if I end up picking up the sequel, then great. If not, then I'm okay with it. The next book I read for this readathon is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, and I read this for the crying face emoji, which is the challenge of reading a book that will make you cry. I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it so much. I know that it's like a problematic book, but I highly recommend it to everybody. Obviously there's trigger warnings for rape and abuse, but it is definitely worth the read. I'm going to have a full review up of it on my channel soon. Probably next Sunday I'm going to say, but I could be wrong because my upload schedule is never accurate. The next book I read was We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. And I could use this book for so many of the challenges. I'm going to go with the two boys holding hands emoji and this is supposed to be a book about a marginalized group. This book has LGBTQ plus characters in it. It features a gay couple. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Henry Denton who has been continuously abducted by aliens since the age of 11. These aliens have informed him that the world is going to be ending in 144 days and they've given him the option to push a big red button in order to save the world. Henry doesn't think that the world is worth saving. His boyfriend committed suicide last year. His mom is barely holding the family together. His dad left him. His brother's girlfriend is pregnant and his grandma is losing her mind to Alzheimer's. That's when he meets a boy named Diego Vega and his view on the world may just end up changing. I loved every single one of the characters in this book. They're all so important to the big message of the story. I sympathized with Henry so much and I just wanted to like reach into the pages and hug him and let him know everything is going to be okay and I just, oh he was such a little cinnamon roll. I loved Diego and how supportive and loving he was towards Henry. Audrey was also such a great friend to Henry. She was always there for him in support supportive in everything he needed. The one character I cannot stand is Marcus. He's a piece of shit and I just want him to leave the world forever and get abducted by the aliens instead of Henry because I just cannot with him. He made me so angry every single scene he was in just like made my blood boil. I really loved Charlie and how he developed throughout the book and I loved Zoe. I wish Zoe was in the book more because the book is said to be a contemporary romance and it is definitely so much more than that. I think that it should not be advertised as a romance at all. It's not really the focus of the book in my opinion. I think it's more of a mental health book and an LGBTQ plus book. I think that that's how it should be advertised but you know that's just me. Right from the very first line I was captivated by Henry and his story and I needed to know what was going on and what was going to happen next. I really like the overall message of the book and how even if it doesn't feel like it you are important to the world to at least one other person and just keep fighting and keep living and I just think it's such a beautiful story and I really think everybody should read it. The final book that I've read in the first two weeks of Emojiathon is A Kiss in Time by Alex Flynn. I ended up giving it a two out of five stars on Goodreads. I read this book for the airplane emoji which is a book set in a different country than your own and this book takes place in Europe as well as America. And I'm from Canada so different country. This book follows Princess Talia who for her first 15 years of life has been told never to go near a spindle because she was cursed by an evil witch named Malvolia 
and if she is to prick her finger before her 16th birthday, her entire kingdom and she will fall into a deep sleep until her true love comes and kisses her awake. 300 years later, 17-year-old Jack is sent on a European tour with one of his friends and while looking for a beach, they stumble upon Euphrasia and the beautiful sleeping Talia and that's when he decides that he's going to kiss her because, you know, that's what you do when you find an unconscious girl. You kiss them. But he ends up waking her from her 300 years slumber. Now, convinced that Jack is her one true love, she convinces him to take her to America and she is going to try and make him fall in love with her. So obviously, this is a retelling of the classical tale of Sleeping Beauty. And usually, I am a huge fan of fairy tale retellings, but this one just fell so short for me. I did not like it. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars, like I said. I did really like the alternating perspectives between Talia and Jack. I found that to be the best part of the book. I didn't really like Jack as a main character. I found him to be very annoying. I found Talia to be less annoying, but still annoying. I did really like how Talia's character developed throughout the story, and she went from being the bratty, spoiled princess to somebody who was more aware of her surroundings and the other people's feelings and how she should behave in, you know, 21st century. I really like her innocence and how naive she was about everything in the 21st century. I thought that, like, her learning how to use a telephone was really funny and, like, her getting drunk for the first time was also really funny. One of the main issues I had with the book is the, like, kiss awake scene. Which, like, obviously you know with Sleeping Beauty, like, it's going to happen. Obviously he's going to kiss the princess awake. But the way that it was written and described was just really creepy to me. Like, it was literally, he walks into this room, sees this unconscious girl, and he's like, yo, she's super hot, I'm gonna make out with her. Like, that's basically how it was written, and that, it just creeped me out. Like, obviously it has to happen for Sleeping Beauty, but I think that it could have been written in a way that wasn't, like, rapey. Does that sound bad? But, like, that's what it felt like. It was not a pleasant experience for me. I also didn't really like Talia and Jack's love story. I think it was very choppy, and one second they were like, I hate you, you're the worst person in this entire world, and then two seconds later they were like, I love you. You're amazing, you're so nice, and like everything about you makes me so happy. And it's like you guys spent a day together, you do not love each other, stop. I think that the pacing of the book was very quick, you don't realize how fast you're reading until it's over, and you're, you're like, oh shit, I've done the book, okay, cool. But, but I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more if I read it when I was like 14, 15 rather than 21. Alright guys, so those were the first eight books that I read for the Emojiathon. Hopefully I can read more, but I start work in a week, so. Don't know if reading will actually happen after I start because I'll probably be sleeping as soon as I get home. But let me know down below what you guys have read and what challenges you've completed so far. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!